Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today we are talking about my most anticipated new releases for 2021 and this is going to be part one. So in this one I'm specifically talking about new releases that are coming out from authors that I already know and love. So they might be continuations of series that I'm already invested in or maybe just something new from an author that I already like. And then part two is going to be coming very soon and that is going to be new releases from debut or new to me authors. I split it up this way last year and I liked that format. It helped me kind of keep things organized for myself. So I'm doing it again this year. Something that's a little different this year about how I'm organizing it is that I am going to be doing just new releases for the first half of 2021. So January through June. Um, because usually what happens to me every year is that I do anticipated releases for the entire year. And then halfway through the year, of course, more stuff has been announced. And so I have to do a updated anticipated releases anyway. So this year I'm just gonna like plan for that, do it on purpose, and do this video which is specifically the first half of the year and then halfway through the year I'll do an updated second half of the year anticipated releases. Also this year or for 2021 there are a lot of new releases that I'm very excited for. It was really hard to like narrow down my list for anticipated releases. Um, so I definitely have enough to talk about just for the first half of the year. Um, anyways, let's get started. So starting in January, first up we have Across the Green Grass Fields by Shannon McGuire. This is the sixth book in the Wayward Children series, which is a series of novellas that I think is very well known on booktube, but they follow um, kids that go to these magical portal worlds. And it kind of goes like every other book takes place at the uh, home for wayward children and then every other book kind of takes place in one of these magical worlds. And so this one is one of the ones that's going to take place in a magical world and I think this one is called the magical world for this one is called like Hoofland or something but it's a world that is all based on horses and I think they're like centaurs um, so I'm very excited for that I really enjoy this series. Next up we have another novella which is Remote Control by Nnedi Okorafor and I have really liked novellas from Nnedi Okorafor before and so I'm very excited to see another one from her. Um, this one, for one thing, has a beautiful cover. They revealed this cover months ago and that just got me like so excited about this because I love this cover. But then also the premise of this just sounds amazing. I'm just gonna read it off. It says, She's the adopted daughter of the angel of death. Beware of her. Mind her. Death guards her like one of its own. The day Fatima forgot her name, death paid a visit. From here on in, she would be known as Senkofa, a name that meant nothing to anyone but her, the only tie to her family and her past. Her touch is death, and with a glance a town can fall. And she walks, alone except for her fox companion, searching for the object that came from the sky and gave itself to her when the meteors fell and when she was yet unchanged, searching for answers. But is there a greater purpose for Sankofa now that death is her constant companion? I think that sounds amazing. The adopted daughter of the angel of death, and she has a fox companion. I'm so excited for this. Then I also have a book of poetry that I'm anticipating, which is Where Hope Comes From, Poems of Resilience, Healing, and Light from Nikita Gill. I've read poetry from Nikita Gill before and really liked it. Um, and I think that this is poetry that she has written uh, during the pandemic while in quarantine, and it's about resilience during that experience. Next is a contemporary romance, which is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. It's adult contemporary romance. It's the third book in the Brown Sisters trilogy, which I read the first two books this year and really enjoyed them. Um, so this is following the youngest sister. So this says, Eve Brown, the flightiest Brown sister, crashes into the life of an uptight B&B &B owner and has him falling hard, literally. Jacob Wayne is in control always. The bed and breakfast owner's on a mission to dominate the hospitality industry and he expects nothing less than perfection. Then Eve hits him with her car, supposedly by accident. Now his arm is broken, his B&B &B is understaffed, and the dangerously unpredictable Eve is fluttering around trying to help. Before long, she's infiltrating his work, his kitchen, and his spare bedroom. Jacob hates everything about it, or rather, he should. 
So I just think that sounds super fun. I really liked the first two books in this series, so I'm excited to have this one coming out in 2021. Next up, we have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. Aidan Thomas wrote Cemetery Boys, which I read earlier this year and loved, so I'm really excited to have another book coming out from them. Um, and this is a YA contemporary fantasy, and I think it is a Peter Pan retelling, kind of, or Peter Pan adjacent. Uh, the description says, when children go missing in the small coastal town of Astoria, people look to Wendy for answers. It's been five years since Wendy and her two brothers went missing in the woods, but when the town's children start to disappear, the questions surrounding her brother's mysterious circumstances are brought back into light. Attempting to flee her past, Wendy almost runs over an unconscious boy lying in the middle of the road and gets pulled into the mystery haunting the town. Peter, a boy who she thought lived only in her stories, claims that if they don't do something, the missing children will meet the same fate as her brothers. In order to find them and rescue the missing kids, Wendy must confront what's waiting for her in the woods. So as I said, I'm really looking forward to another book from this author. I loved the characters in Cemetery Boys, so I really think that I'm probably going to love the characters in this one also. Plus it seems like it has some creepy woods, which I'm very here for. Um, I'm not a big fan of Peter Pan, but I feel like I'm gonna love this. Next we have Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo, which is the second book in the Nikolai duology, which is part of the Grishaverse. I think this book was originally supposed to come out in 2020, but then got pushed back to 2021, so I'm glad that it's finally gonna be coming out next year. Now we have a graphic novel, which is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. I read the first three volumes of Heart Heartstopper earlier this year and really enjoyed them. It's a contemporary YA high school romance um, about these two boys, Nick and Charlie, and it's just so like heartwarming and sweet, which are just the best kind of graphic novels, I think. I love the really like wholesome, sweet graphic novels. So I really enjoyed this series and I'm excited to have another installment. Next we have Mr. Impossible by Maggie Stiefvater, which is the second book in the Dreamer trilogy, which is a spin-off from The Raven Cycle. The Raven Cycle is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, and I have, I enjoyed the first book in the Dreamer trilogy. I don't think it's going to, I don't think I'm going to love this trilogy quite as much as the original trip series, but I still have been enjoying it and I just love having new books from Maggie Stiefvater. But I gotta say, with this one, like, I don't like this title or this cover, which pretty much seems to be the consensus. Everything, everyone I have seen online talking about this cover and title reveal when it, like, came out, nobody seems to like it. Um, but I'm still excited for the book. <laughs> Next we have A Chorus Rises by Bethany C. Morrow, which is a YA contemporary fantasy. This is the second book to A Song Below Water, which came out earlier this year and I read, and I enjoyed A Song Below Water, not quite as much as the other book, Mem, that I've read from this author, um, but I'm interested to see where this series goes, so I am going to be picking up the second book. This is following a different character who was a side character in uh, in the first one. And so the description for this one says, teen influencer Naima Bradshaw has it all. She's Portland famous, privileged, gorgeous, and she's an Aleko. A charismatic person with a unique melody adored by all. Everyone loves her, well, until she's cast as the awful person who exposed Tavia's secret siren powers. Now she's being dragged by the media. No one understands her side, not her boyfriend, not her friends, nor her Aleko community. But Naima knows the truth and is determined to build herself back up, no matter what. When a new flourishing segment of Naima's online supporters start targeting black girls, however, Naima must discover the true purpose of her magic. And the last book that I have on this list is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is an adult high fantasy that is inspired by Indian culture, and I think this is the beginning of a new series from her. I read Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri earlier this year and really enjoyed it, so I'm interested to see this new series that she has coming out. So the description for this one says, Imprisoned by her dictator brother, Malini spends her days in isolation in the Hirana, an ancient temple that was once the source of the powerful magical deathless waters, but is now little more than a decaying ruin. Priya is a maidservant, one among several who make the treacherous journey to the top of the Hirana every night to clean Malini's chambers. She is happy to be anonymous drudge, so long as it keeps anyone from guessing the dangerous secret she hides. 
but when Malini accidentally bears witness to Priya's true nature, their destinies become irrevocably tangled. One is a vengeful princess seeking to depose her brother from his throne, the other is a priestess seeking to find her family. Together, they will change the fate of an empire. So I think that one sounds really interesting also, and I love things that have like priestesses in them, so I'm really looking forward to that. So those are my most anticipated 2021 releases from authors that I already know and love. Let me know if you're excited about any of these releases also. Part two about my anticipated releases from new to me authors is going to be coming soon. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!